Hello there. We're going to look at a really uh, interesting topic here, which is a change in depreciation rate. So as you know, when we first purchase an asset, a long-lived asset, we're going to have to estimate the uh, number of useful years to our company. And we're going to have to estimate the residual value. So this could be, as in this example we're going to do, 10 years out. So it's pretty tough, isn't it, to say, oh, in 10 years, I'm going to sell this thing for $20,000. You could be off. But of course, as time goes on, you have a much better idea, perhaps, as to how long you're going to use that asset and how much money you're going to receive for it when you're finished with it and you just want to sort of get rid of it and sell it. So if we find out that we have better information in a, a later year, we're going to actually revise our depreciation amounts. We're not just going to stick with the the poor information or that we started with you know a few years ago we're going to update our amounts with the better newer information so this example is going to look at that topic <clears throat> and I'll just make a couple of comments as we go so to start with we're buying this asset June 7 2015 a long time ago for a hundred thousand dollars the residual value is 20 and we're going to use straight line depreciation. So as you know, with straight line depreciation, we're just going to subtract the residual and we will depreciate 80,000. So this is our plan way back on June 7, 2015. Now when we do straight line depreciation, in this class at least, and in many businesses, our practice is going to be to round partial depreciation to the nearest month. Now I know that you don't have to do that. It's not an accounting rule. It's just a practice and just to be clear, that's what we're going to do in this course. So you'll notice that June 7 is between June 1 and June 15. Therefore it rounds down. So what we're really saying, if you just have a look at the screen here, we're saying we're going to go in terms of amounts from June 7 which rounds down to June 1. We're going to go to December 31. Okay, so how many months is that? Right, well, it's going to be seven months, right? So seven months out of 12 is the depreciation in that first year of ownership. After that, we're going to use our yearly rate. So easy enough to do, right? We're going to say, okay, here's the 10 years of estimated useful life. We're going to take our $80,000 and we're going to divide by 10 years. So we're going to get $8,000 a year. And of course you knew that because we don't need a calculator to do 80,000 divided by 10. Okay, but that's a full year amount. So what we want to do is we want to calculate our partial amount for 2015. And then let's look at the rest of this example. On December 7, we have more information available, but this is December 7, 2022, a long time in the future. Um, we now, in December 2022, believe the residual value will be lower. It will go down to 15,000, but we actually believe that we will use this equipment for 12 years. So that's a big change. Now, what I'd like you to note first it's a really important distinction in this type of problem is that our depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation is up to date for December 31, 2021, right? Because we do adjusting journal entries. So I want to write this on the screen because this is so important. So it's up to date for December 31, 2021. Right? And that's the last time we did our adjusting entry for depreciation expense. So here's the key. It does not matter when in 2022 that we find better information or sort of change our mind or, or want to make a better estimate. It doesn't matter if it's January 1 or December 31. You're not going to maintain 
your old, less correct estimate for part of 2022 and use your better information for the remainder of 2022, instead, you're saying, well, we're up to date for December 31, 2021. So regardless of when in 2022, we make this new estimate, it is going to be in effect for all of 2022 from January 1 on. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Don't try and split up your estimate into parts of a year. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is sort of as of December 31, 2021, find out the book value of this equipment. So let's do that. So we know, I'm just going to do it here on the screen with you. So we know that 8,000 is the yearly depreciation. We know that in 2015, we purchased this June 7, which rounds down to June 1, which means we actually owned it seven months. So I'm going to go um, seven twelfths of a year. Now I'm kind of stretching this out on Excel, but just to show you. So we're going to take our $8,000 times seven months divided by 12, and we're going to get 4667 for 2015. Now, notice that we want to find out the book value, or sort of like accumulated depreciation actually. We want to find this out up to and including December 31, 2021. So what we have is 2016 and 2017 right through 2021, okay? So this is $8,000. So notice this is six years. Okay, so we can do this any old way we want. I know mathematically you can do anything you want, right? But I'm just gonna go and add up these. You could just multiply your 8,000 times six, right? But anyway, those are the, those are the full years. And of course, there's the partial year. So I'm gonna do this again and again. Don't worry how I'm doing this. Like, Obviously, you, you could do this part. Okay, so our accumulated depreciation to this date here is 52667. So now we're going to say, okay, as of that date, we're going to change the rate. And here's what we have. Notice that, again, we if you just recall, I'm going to come over here a bit. We paid $100,000 for this piece of equipment. Our accumulated depreciation is the 52. So that means that our book value is 47,333. So we're working from here. Okay. Now we know the new residual is going to be 15,000. So we're starting from 47. Let's deduct the new residual. Because again, this 47 is book value. So we say, okay, our residual under our brand new estimate is 15,000. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I can get some commas in here so we can see what we're doing. So we need to depreciate a further 32,333. Now, here's the tricky part. And I've, I've actually started as with a difficult problem. So we're, instead of going you know, from an easy one, we're starting a tough one. And here's, here's the tough part. If this is going to have a useful life of 12 years, well, we didn't buy it January 1, 2015. So we can't just say, oh, it's got, you know, seven years here and therefore five left. It's not going to add up. In fact, here's what we've done. Every one of these was a 12 month year. So I'm going to add this up. Here's what we've done. We've put in 79 months of depreciation already. So six years at full years plus seven more. Okay. 
So we've depreciated 79 months. If we have a total life now of an estimate of 12 years, here's how we can figure out how much time is left. And I'm going to show you a super easy way to do this. If you do it this way, you'll just always get it right. And this kind of problem is going to be so easy for you. So here's what we do. We're just going to take our 12 years and we're going to multiply that by 12 months. Okay. So obviously we know what that is. But what I'm doing is I'm going to say, okay, 12 times 12, right? And that is, and of course I know you know the answer, right? It's 144 months. So notice that we've depreciated the 79 months already and the new full useful life is 12 years, which is 144 months. So now this is the easy part. I just have to say, well, I've already done 79 months of that. How many months are left? And it is going to be 65 months remaining. Okay. Now, by doing this in months, I don't have to go through any mental gymnastics about what portion of a year this was. All I know is that I need to depreciate 32,333 and I have 65 months to do it. So we're going to we're going to take this number our 32,000 amount to depreciate. We're going to take our 65 months and we're going to divide that out. And this is I just want to make sure I don't have any decimals here. Okay, not quite even in dollars. So there's our monthly amount, 497.44 for one month. Well, we want to know a year, right? So I'm going to take 12 months in a year. And all we need to do is multiply that out. So I'm going to go take 12 months times the monthly rate. And there's our brand new rate. So, you know, um, this is an estimate. I don't need to carry 23 cents in an estimate. We're going to call that 59.69 per year. So by doing this in this method, I think if you practice this a couple times, you're going to find it not too hard to do. And again, it doesn't matter when in 2022 we decided that we would have a revised estimate. This 59.69 is going to be the new depreciation amount per year in force for all of 2022. So when we want to do our journal entry 2022, it's going to look like this. We're going to have December 31. Let's go 22. So depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. There's our number. Okay, so notice that we went from 8,000 a year to almost $6,000 a year. And there we have it a new depreciation rate commonly done in business.